question reads that a select committee of the Legislative Council be inquired, be established, sorry, to inquire into and report on the kangaroo and wallaby populations in our state of South Australia and take particular reference to how they are affected by commercial and non-commercial harvesting, the adequacy and enforcement of the National Code of Practice for the humane shooting of kangaroos and wallabies for commercial purposes, and the National Code of Practice for the humane shooting of kangaroos and wallabies for non-commercial purposes, including methods used and their impact on animal welfare. It also uh, seeks to explore the sustainability of current harvesting levels and their long-term impact on the species as well as the impact of commercial and non-commercial harvesting on the health and well-being of kangaroos and wallabies, including any physical and psychological stress caused to the animals, permitted wildlife rescuers and carers and First Nations peoples, as well as looking at alternative strategies and practices that could be implemented to ensure the humane treatment and conservation of these animals. Uh, I bring this motion to this council today knowing that there has been a similar inquiry in New South Wales uh, some two years ago now uh, which found that there was so much better uh, that s jurisdictions could be doing with regards to the treatment of uh, kangaroos and wallabies uh, in our nation and uh, given that uh, there is currently uh, work underway to look at uh, our management uh, of these animals uh, through the departmental's own consultation. It is time that community and carer and other voices were also heard uh, as we have a unique opportunity. I think that uh, we will have varied opinions in this council uh, on kangaroos and wallabies. Indeed, uh, if we are reflective of the community, that is expected to be the case, but I know from previous speeches uh, on this issue uh, that we do have a diversity of opinions. I would note, though, uh, that I think we can all agree that kangaroos and wallabies are one of Australia's iconic native animals and that they are more than just our national emblems. Indeed, kangaroos and wallabies form part of our state here of the extraordinary biodiversity and contribute to the health of our landscape. They clear plants and they play an important role in bushfire hazard reduction. They contribute to the regeneration and health of our native grasslands. Their fur traps seeds and redistributes them over wide areas. And their toes can aerate compacted and nutrient deficient soils. These creatures are really our native ecosystem engineers. Yet despite that nat national affection, uh, indeed, putting them on uh, our national emblems. The benefits that these uh, creatures provide is often forgotten. And indeed, there are very long-standing concerns in the community about how we treat and manage these creatures. Uh, I bring this motion to this council today in particular, as just last month, piles of dead kangaroos and thousands of kangaroo bones were found left to rot on land adjacent to the South Para Reservoir. That's one of our largest drinking reservoirs. Kangaroo bodies had been dumped in a pit, which then filled with rainwater and then turned a toxic green. And indeed, they'd been done on SA water land. The footage from this gave South Australia promotion around the world. Not the sort of promotion I imagine that this state wishes to see. Not the sort of promotion that the Premier welcomes uh, with his major events. And not the sort of promotion that I would hope uh, would be something that we'd see in the future. However, this is not the first time that we've seen uh, uh, such sort of uh, exposure of the way that kangaroos and wallabies are treated in our nation. Australia-wide, Australia these creatures are not farmed in the traditional sense. They are hunted by commercial, private and hobby shooters. Uh, they are often shot at night, often from an unstable platform, such as a moving ute. And all the while, those kangaroos and wallabies, of course, are moving targets. So it comes as no surprise then uh, that the wounding rates 
rather than the kill rates are quite high. In fact, one study found that up to 40% of kangaroos were mis-shot and left with injuries. I ask in any other uh, industry, would a wounding rate that high be accepted? This inquiry is needed so we can understand how our state's kangaroo and wallaby population is being affected by the harvesting practices that we currently have in place. There has been serious questions also raised about the adequacy of the population estimates that are used to determine how many kangaroos and wallabies can actually be killed each season. Those quotas often fluctuate wildly with population estimates that actually appear to be statistically impossible. Hunting can take place in areas where no population data has been collected using estimates that simply do not stack up. We need proper scrutiny of these methods and the data used to decide how many of those kangaroos and wallabies can be so-called sustainably killed uh, that is scientific, verifiable and accurate. Uh, this inquiry would also look at the consideration of how the national standards are applied here in our state. In fact, it would hopefully establish whether first, firstly the standards are being enforced and beyond that consideration be given to whether those standards are still fit for purpose. I note that we've seen a lot of international brands take steps back from using kangaroo products. And again, I ask this council to reflect on how that reflects on our state. Both Nike and Puma have announced that they will no longer use kangaroo leather in their products. This follows others, including Gucci, Prada, Diodora, and Little, I don't know how to say that one, L-I-D-L. Brands do not walk away from products for no reason. They have had concerns that were not being addressed. And I think one thing that gets lost when talking about the so-called harvesting of kangaroos and wallabies is the well-being of the animals. And that is why these brands are walking away. I have already mentioned that high wounding rate, as high as 40% in some estimates, but we also regularly see the killing of female kangaroos and wallabies with dependent young. These young are seen as a waste product and currently joeys are disposed of with a swift blow to the head. Indeed, those methods leading to broader impacts within the mob. I also think that we really need to stop and reflect on those who take care of these creatures, the wildlife carers and rescuers who spend countless hours caring for these animals. They nurse them back to health to eventually send them on their way. Except kangaroo and wallaby carers know that often they are now being forced to potentially send them back to a hunting ground. They could send them back out knowing that there is a good chance that they will be shot and killed or injured. And compassion fatigue amongst our rescuing and caring community is real. There is only so much that wildlife carers can give when considering this issue and their wellbeing should not be forgotten, but currently it has been. Questions have also been raised by a community with me, by carers in particular, on their ability to keep kangaroos in their sanctuaries long term. Some kangaroos come to the sanctuaries and are not able to be released. Carers have been able to keep these an animals in the sanctuary for life, but recently concerns have been raised that in the future this will no longer be the case. And I note that on the Stacey Lee program late last year on the ABC, uh, the department had to uh, address this issue and certainly didn't seem to give much clarity on what the future directions will be, certainly not in a way that uh, has given much comfort to those rescuers and carers. So carers remain concerned that they will be eventually forced to either release or euthanise. That is not a choice that we should be making our rescuers and wildlife carers undertake. We've heard a lot of um, quite... Uh, worthy mentions of how the veterinary profession grapples with those issues. We should not be forcing those same choices uh, onto wildlife carers. These creatures face a series of challenges. Habitat loss, climate change and human activities are all posing significant threats to kangaroo and wallaby populations in our state. We must ensure that sustainable practice are put in place to allow these creatures to thrive in the land that they have inhabited for thousands of years and indeed to allow the land uh, to thrive. Uh, 
in uh, bringing this motion before the council. I know that this will not be the end of the debate and I know that many uh, wildlife and particularly kangaroo and wallaby groups will be in contact with members of this council, have long called for such an inquiry and are hopeful uh, that this council will uh, see fit at this point in time uh, to take a proper look at our management of these animals. Uh, for many of you, I'm sure, and I know um, I've had conversations with other members of this place uh, about kangaroos, but I know, I, I'm sure most Australians have some uh, affinity one way or the other uh, with these animals. Uh, certainly, I've just... Uh, been prompted by my mum and my uncle Murray about Rui, that uh, used to be my grandma's uh, stray kangaroo uh, that we uh, had for many, many years while I was a, a young child and a, a teenager in uh, the Boganshire. And uh, Rui uh, sometimes was replaced by another Rui. I'm, I'm not sure how many Ruis we're actually up to uh, there uh, in my grandma's former grandma's home, now my uncle and mum's home. Um, but we've always loved to take in those strays, uh, but that is not necessarily the situation of all, uh, in, even in that small community. Uh, that Kangaroos, a love-hate story documentary, uh, certainly I think really uh, captures uh, the weird love-hate relationship that we do have uh, with uh, kangaroos in this country. Uh, that has perhaps led to laws and practices uh, which are not those that are fit for purpose and reflective of the sorts of standards that we wish, would wish to see uh, in the future. So I certainly encourage members to um, uh, read the correspondence that they will be receiving. I will be circulating a document um, uh, in support of this inquiry that I received uh, from one of the uh, rescue groups. Um, and uh, I hope that members will take a look at that. Uh, you will see that this is not a black and white issue. This is an issue that has many uh, nuances to it, but it is an issue that I think we could all probably agree that these practices do need improvement. And I would hope that a select committee or a committee inquiry of some sort uh, be it uh, a select committee or, or a standing committee referral to an appropriate standing committee, might actually see that cross-party collaborative approach taken to really improve our practices and laws and better support kangaroos and wallabies in this state and those who care for them. Uh, with that, Mr President, I commend the motion. Um, the Honourable Ms Eldenawi to move the debate be adjourned. I move the debate be adjourned. Seconded. Put the question, those the questions say aye. Aye. Can't say no, the ayes have it. And the Honourable Frank's an order of the day for... The next Wednesday of sitting. And that's second to put the question, those the questions say aye. Can't say no, the ayes have it. Clark. Notice of motion, private business number three, the Honourable C. Benaris to move.